Uh, the goal is to get to Albany and get that bill passed. It's a long road from Buffalo to Albany, but time and distance won't keep these Western New York healthcare workers from having their voices heard. They're all members of District 1 CWA Locals 1133, 1122, 1168, and 1170. The Union's Healthcare Coordinating Council is sponsoring this two-day conference of education and activism. Different jobs, but mutual concerns. I work at Mercy Hospital Radiology. Buffalo General Hospital Behavioral Health. I'm a mental health therapist. I'm an x-ray tech at Millard Fillmore Suburban Hospital. I'm an RN and I work at Buffalo General Hospital. At Mercy Hospital in the parking department. Uh, I work for St. Joe's Hospital. I am a uh, CNA. We say take away! We say no way! So I'm really hoping that little spark of inspiration comes from a really good two days with some training about healthcare reform and some training about being an activist. And then to take that and go the next day and to be at a rally with other union folks and to actually go inside and meet with their legislators and talk to them about some of the bills that we have coming forward mean to them. Two bills stuck in a legislative logjam. Over the course of 10 years passing safe patient handling, has faced many political roadblocks. 10 years of fleeting promises. 10 years of ceaseless debate. Keeping the bill moving forward has taken 10 years of almighty resolve. For Kenmore Emergency Room RN Vanessa Quinn, the stalemate is a very sore subject. Very sore. We have concerns on safe patient lifting Anywhere from moving a patient up into the bed or getting a patient out of the car in front of the emergency department. We've had, I think in the last five years, in the ER that I know of, at least four to five RNs under the age of 40 that has had massive um, back injuries that I have not yet returned to work. You go home with a sore back, you take a Tylenol, you start all over again. And that bill provides for healthcare workers to work in an environment that they don't hurt their backs or at the very least that potential is very diminished because of the equipment that's available now to move patients, turn patients, get them out of bed. The hospitals do well when this is implemented and there are several good examples. The Kaleida system is one good example. They've been doing it for years. So what's the holdup? for the holdups. It does take uh, at least two, maybe three years for a return on investment for that equipment to be seen, but it is well worth the investment. We're feeling a little bit left behind because other people like steel workers and laborers and so forth would never be expected to lift a 300 pound workpiece. Our workpieces though cry when we drop them to the ground. And then there's that issue of numbers that never quite add up. Staffing ratios is really critical to us. In the ER, it takes only one cold to come in and it can consume half your staff at some point. It doesn't matter how many letters you have after your name. It doesn't matter how well educated you are. If you don't have the time to see that patient, education doesn't mean a thing. Patients sometimes have to wait. We've had them in the ICU. You know, you can't do but one thing at a time and do it safely. We've had them in the OR. We've had them in the recovery room for years. I do believe your patient satisfaction goes up as the staffing ratio goes up. So they're not like this thing that we just pulled out of our hats saying we should have ratios. They've actually existed in many areas. There's just a resistance to put them out on the floors and say, we need these ratios to give quality patient care. For over a decade, Vanessa Quinn has heard all the anecdotes. But I, I have to tell you, my dad was a shop steward for CWA. The so. pep talk. So what you have to do is you keep ringing their doorbell. Keep knocking on their door. And the speeches. And now we have to convince hospital administrators and hospital executives and hospital lobbying groups, particularly those from Galveston, how important this bill is and how much money they could save through implementing safe patient handling. Because it's a very long road turning rhetoric into reality. Heading home, Vanessa has a message for those in control.
So we'll see what happens. The good news is voting day is November. <laughs>